Uh, hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here. And I realize that it's kind of difficult to be the opener after a coffee break of our last session, but you know, try our best to stay awake. And I hope that this, uh, this material is quite interesting. I want to just briefly introduce this uh, case study. It's uh, a larger part of my dissertation project in which I look at the problem of nomadism in the Russian imperial and early Soviet context in the late 19th and early 20th century, and I try to basically um, ask the question, first of all, whether um, how nomadism was handled as a problem, as a discursive problem, and how it was handled in relation to the emergence of the new science of archaeology, and uh, whether we can even speak about such a thing as an archaeology of uh, nomadism. Um, here I want to talk about one part of this dissertation project, uh, which deals with um, the exploration by Siberian re members of the Siberian regionalist movement in uh, the Urantai region, which is today the autonomous uh, Republic of Tuva in uh, the Russian Federation, and how in this region multiple discourses and identities and languages of self-description overlapped uh, and inform the perception of, and presentation of this region. Um, so, a lot of people have said a lot of things about Siberia over the course of this conference. Uh, I want to uh, bring up some main postulates of the uh, Siberian regionalist movement up on screen for us today. Uh, and I want to focus specifically on um, the second to last point here, and on the last point, uh, there was a question raised yesterday in the closing remarks about whether or not region helps us as a as an analytical term or as an actor term, and here it's extremely important because it's both. Uh, region was a part of the uh, self-presentation, the language of re regionalism was a part of the presentation of the Siberian Regionalist Project, I think it's in the name. Uh, and I want to also focus our attention on the fact that um, for the regionalists, their position vis-a-vis -vis other portions of the empire, whether it be Muscovite Russia, where, whether it be um, the greater imperial body as a whole came as a result of um, comparison between the position of Siberia and, say, of other so-called settler colonies, specifically uh, the American Midwest, the American West, the Canadian Far North, and Australia. Um, so here are some of our main actors. We've spoken about them at length, and uh, it's uh, probably interesting to look at them in the, in the flesh somewhat. So um, the, the thing about the regionalists is that they considered themselves, and they positioned themselves, as a group of modernizers. They were in the discourse of um, I'm sorry to say discourse so often. I'm, I work in intellectual history. It's an unfortunate <laughs> product. Uh, they were people who understood the trends, the scientific language and trends of the time. So first of all, they looked at their Siberian region, which, however, imagine from the girls eastward. And they, they saw the problem that uh, most of the Russian imperial uh, science in the earlier parts of the 19th and 18th century was produced in Siberia. 
So they, they looked at people like Humboldt, like Pallas, like Castor, and like all these other people who were Russian imperial academics who made a career for themselves, and they said, oh my god, this is a problem because the, these are very old, they are not current, they don't, uh, don't, they don't reflect the diversity of our region as it exists, um, they do not speak the same analytical language that we do, something needs to be done, what needs to be done is to uh, create an expedition or create an institution which would um, uh, with Siberian resources and with Siberian specialists, uh, study Siberia, how, however broadly construed or narrowly construed. Uh, what's also very interesting is that of these people, um, only one, only this one, the protagonist of our story, Alexander Andreanov, had a formal university education and no criminal record uh, in 1881 when our story takes place. He, he'd go to exile later. But at the point, he was the one who had no criminal record. So at the, at the end of the day, as modernizers, these people are kind of strange, right? There's no pedigree, and there's a very tenuous relationship with um, the state, which we understand as the producer of, of knowledge and the main client for the production of any kind of useful knowledge in this case. Um, so in 1881, what the, the three gentlemen in the previous slide decided was that, all right, um, we have some money, let's create an expedition and study the um, uh, the geology of the Tom River Basin. So they were based in Tomsk, so they, they decided to, that they will travel around Tomsk and uh, gather some geological samples, maybe like gather some bugs, right, and bring it all back and talk about the biodiversity of Siberia. At least this is how they pitched it. At what they actually said, what uh, the um, correspondence between Adrianov and Potanin reveals is that uh, they were saying, well, well no, um, how about you uh, do what you said that you do. You go down this river basin, but you don't stop at the, uh, but you go here. This is our entire region. I chose this map precisely because it uh, highlights it in a different color and because there's this very, very nice border here which signifies to us the, the simple fact that um, our entire region was under the sovereignty of the Qing Empire at the time. Um, <coughs> I'm going to refer to my um, uh, right. So they, they sent Adriana who of the three people was the most, um, let's say, uh, prepared in terms of the kind of expert knowledge that he carried. But again, that they said uh, that they were gonna study bugs and rivers. What they actually wanted to also study was um, people, things, and importantly, uh, these. Kurgans. Uh, what is a Kurgan? It is a type of burial, which was which is associated and was associated, especially in Siberia, with uh, nomadic cultures, nomadic peoples. Um, the the problem is that there. Well, the problem and perhaps the. The peculiarity of the Kurgan is that it exists not only in Siberia, but also in Mongolia, in Urukhai, in southern Russia, all the way up to Crimea. And uh, so when the majority of the archaeological material that they had to study 
is something like this. First of all, it's not very impressive. Second of all, it's not very distinct. Uh, usually, we have this historiography about archaeological knowledge that they, it's produced because it's new, because it's progressive, it's a, this new new way of doing science, and it also shows you the, the nationalization of your space through, you know, particular, say, Polish or uh, Ukrainian or something like this patrimony that, that, that happens here. Uh, but this is not the case in Siberia. We, if we look at the way that, say, another regionalist, Clements, uh, Adriano's close compatriot, described Kurgan's, he looked at it and he said, well, actually, you know, even in our small Minusins oblast, there's 12 types of curtains. So we cannot really say that um, there, there's some kind of unifying principle here. In fact, the same person, when he descri describes uh, uh, curtains, he also says, there's also the Rakhai region, and they also have curtains, but I'm not going to talk about them. I'm not going to talk about them because there's this big uh, um, Tanutuvan range, which which um, creates a boundary between my region, Minusinsk, and their region, Tuva, or uh, Urakai, as he called it. So what, what do we see here? We see a kind of layering and uh, interaction of many kinds of in interpretations and imaginations of space that occur concurrently. And again, I want to reiterate that perhaps it uh, came came across in previous um, talks that all the regionalists always agree on everything. And that, that is absolutely not the case. How am I doing on time? Uh, three minutes. Okay. All right. Um, so besides um, Kurgan's, what they were also trying, what Adrian was also trying to do with, was to get to these Kurgans to present himself as a uh, as a scientist, and we see this here when this uh, this is a vignette. I talk about it in the text quite quite in detail. It appears in the Saint Petersburg newspaper, which says basically, "Look at this guy. He comes to Siberia from outside. He wants to study us, and all these bad bad people in the government are not letting him study us. In fact." It's one big lie because the guy who's coming is not safe, is not an outsider. He's a Siberian. He is not not a scientist. He is de facto a criminal, and uh, he is also not actually studying Siberia. He's fixing to study um, the the border regions. What is his crime? The crime is basically sedition. We have to remember that this is 1881. May of 1881, two months beforehand, uh, the Emperor Alexander II was shot, and th there was a, a big deal in Tomsk where uh, they had to, where Adrianov refused to sign the, the paper of uh, fealty to uh, Alexander III. So then this, this person goes and says, I want to go study with. Um, I want to study um, uh, I want to study these wild unenlightened peoples. Yes, please. Yes. And of course, he is. He is. The uh, request is refused. Um, so he goes to Siberia to Urukhai illegally, and what happens is, who takes over the venture is not the government. The state, strictly speaking, but all the, but um, Siberian merchants, who he represents as um, Russian modernizers in the region. In fact, they're all Siberians. They're all close friends. Uh, I guess I'll have to stop. Uh, yeah, I'll have to stop. Yeah, about, about thirty seconds a minute, perhaps just to finish uh, up. Just to, perhaps it's a bit too much, but uh, because because the people have read. The, my colleagues have read the text. I think that what I, what I will have to say is that even though um, the expedition did not dig up any curtains, 
right? What they did do is study people like Safyanov and through Safyanov uh, living nomads, Tuvans, whom, um, who they, I'm sorry, all right, uh, who then presented an image of this fluid kind of moving group of people through which uh, Adrianov was, trying, was able to imagine uh, Tuva as a, a, re a region within a region, so to speak, a space connected to Siberia, not through patrimony, not through dead things, but through um, living nomads. Thank you. I, I'm sorry to rush.